Like many of the lower 48 states, Western Pennsylvania is a sportsman's dream. Here in the heart of the Allegheny National Forest, there's something for everyone, from hunters and anglers to bird enthusiasts and hikers. No matter your outdoor pleasure, this region has it. The Clarion River is our destination in Pennsylvania's great outdoors region. Known for its driftable size, trophy trout and smallmouth bass, it truly is one of the state's best kept secrets. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Heal and this week we're on the Clarion River in northwestern Pennsylvania. We're going to be fishing big water, chucking big flies for big trout. That's coming up next on the new Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. What? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Visitors Bureau, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, One thing that we don't have any control over is the weather, and it pays to have a plan B. The region has suffered from very droughty conditions for several months, but as it happens, we drove into Pennsylvania during the heaviest rain event in months. While in Pennsylvania, we stayed at the Clarion River Lodge and couldn't help but feel the charm and comfort from this 75-year-old facility. Owned and operated by Vic Milko and Marissa Perla, the Clarion River Lodge has a full-service restaurant, pub, and extremely comfortable, well-appointed guest rooms. Located in the hills of the Cook Forest, the lodge is less than 30 minutes from all of the amenities one would require and is smack dab in the middle of some of the most spectacular fishing the region has to offer. While the big river swelled to unfishable levels, the feeder creeks were settling down, so we decided to spend some time on a couple of mountain rivers looking for browns and rainbows. So we're gonna to wanna to go downstream here, cross at the log, come up on the other side along that moss, and like you said, get in maybe down close where that stick's coming up, working your way up. From the point of this rock down to that twig, it's sticking out, it's gonna be the deepest spot okay. of the hole. Um, with the water being up right now, they're probably going to be laying a little further in this slack water, okay. so they are. Now, as you can see, I'm fairly well guarded in here in terms of, uh, you know, my ability to, to back cast or even, even make a roll cast with this weighted rig. So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking advantage of this, this little open water behind me and just doing a little water load up against that bank. I'll cover that and then move through with a couple of steps down. There's a, there's a nice looking root ball directly across from me and I haven't touched that yet, but I really like the looks of that. There we go. Little guy, but we'll take him. Vic, you nailed it. You took the bugger. Come here, darling. Oh, pretty little. Oh, it's a little rainbow. It's a little. Oh, come here. Come here. It's paramount in small creeks to cover as much water as you can and get your fly onto likely looking targets. So work the water all around you when you can. Fish where you will eventually be waiting if that target presents itself. 
as I'm approaching the area that I'm going to be walking, and this is a good pointer, there's just a little depression behind this woody debris here that just looks deep enough to hold a fish. So I'm just going to put a few casts in there just before I wade through it, just in case there's a, a big old brownie. It pays to, uh, it pays to, um, to, to fish where you're going to be walking. Take advantage of your surroundings when the opportunity comes up. We seldom get to overhand cast in tight conditions, but by using tight stream techniques like a roll cast, bow and arrow cast, or water loads, we can get our flies to the fish. When fishing small creeks, it pays to stick and move. Don't get lead feet on one pool or run, but rather walk and cover as much water as you can. You never know what's around the next bend. There's a fish. Faster strip. Little brown, he took the, uh, took the egg. There he goes. We spent a good bit of time on the little creek, but decided for a change in scenery. The feeder creeks to the clarion were clearing and dropping fast, giving us a good feeling about getting on the big river in the morning. a little better than what we've used to see and that's a nice little brown now again it's that situation that situational awareness that's a pretty little brown he smacked that little white woolly come on come on Nice little fish. So the lodge is, is nestled in along the Clarion River here in Cooksburg, Pennsylvania. Um, once a private estate built back in the 1950s was actually a, a landmark to our area here all the way into the 80s and 90s um, before a downturn um, and, uh, and, a, and a close up of the lodge. So we're looking to open up this summertime. We'll have the 20 hotel rooms, four of them that are suites, the pub with the outdoor patio area with gas fire pit tables, which are along beside me here. A couple things that are really important um, of our vision of this place, where it's gonna fit in the Cook Forest. With the dining and the lodging, um, in the couple with nature, a little bit of art, photography work with our art studio, entertainment, live music outside. Um, we're, we're looking to bring a little breath of fresh air to Cook Forest, just something that's a little, a little more invigorating in, in, the, in the forest. So yeah, it's definitely something we're, we're trying to accomplish. The next morning, with the main river having settled down some, we decided to drift the upper river, referred to as the trophy trout sector. We had one goal in mind here, to throw big flies for big fish. This can be a high risk, high reward move, but we were up for it. Our guide this week, Todd DeLucia, is more than just a fly fishing nut. With his background in environmental biology, and working as a watershed specialist with the Cameron County Conservation District, it could be said that he has a finger on the pulse of the region that he plies his guiding trade. 
So I, uh, I have a degree in environmental biology with a concentration in, in, in freshwater ecology. So I, I have a real good understanding of river systems. Uh, as part of my job, you know, it's, it's for me to know water quality and, and how, how things react. And in addition to my job, I, I also do a lot of fish habitat enhancement, stream bank stabilization, things like that. So I, I know what fish need to, to thrive. So my business is Keystone Predator Outfitters. We, uh, I started specializing in, in pike and muskie fly fishing, uh, started moving over into the smallmouth sector, and we really specialize in, in warm water fly fishing, but uh, recently we, we've started to get into a little bit of trout fishing. Well, let's do this, Todd. Finally getting okay conditions. What do you think, we're gonna whale them? Yeah, we got some uh, water come down quite a bit overnight. We got some good color. We'll, uh, we'll hit the soft edges on the bank. You got your work cut out for you. Yeah, I'm gonna be back around. It's gonna put muscles in your poop. Yeah. <laughs> but I like the color of the water. It's got that Me good uh, big fish green color, we call it. Me so too. I think we'll be all right. Good, let's get after it. All right. It's early morning on the Clarion River. We got the big streamers out looking for, hopefully, some hungry trophy trout. Let's uh, get some cast like quartering down and kind of swing them through this. Through this stuff? Yeah. Fishing streamers can be a lot of work, but if you maximize your targets and hit them with frequency, the odds of hooking trophy trout is increased greatly. For this, there are features that you should be looking for, such as ambush points, mid-river structure, and cut or deep banks. During high water, even the largest fish will seek out that soft water, so it pays to be accurate and put your fly on the money. It always pays to be versatile when you're fishing any water. When the opportunity comes up, if you can get out of the boat and, and, and fish a fishy looking run, we have a, a, a lovely little break here where there's a bit of a braid behind this little island and there's a fairly deep depression behind it. We thought it'd be a good idea to just up our chances, try something different. So I'm gonna get out there and run a nymph through here for 10 or 15 minutes and see if we can't poke a fish or two. Although we had a plan to hunt for big browns with streamers, it pays to be ready for everything while being versatile and adaptable. This will more often than not pay off. Like anything in fly angling, there are not guarantees. Carry on? Yeah. While we typically associate fishing streamers from a drift boat as kind of a running and gunning technique, where the boat is moving almost perpetually and you're hitting targets as you go, if you identify a run or a pool that looks particularly fishy, it might be just the depth or the amount of structure in it in terms of boulders or wood, it pays to anchor and fish from a stationary position, but you can still cover water effectively. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probe each target from a 45 degree angle upstream and work my way down and allow the fly to swing out below me. And now I'm just shy of 20 or just downstream of, of 90 degrees. Now I'm just gonna work this back and I'm gonna vary my strip a little bit. Short pauses, longer strips, just to try and get a feel for what the fish are doing or how they're reacting whether they're chasing or whether they're, they're being complacent and just kind of following it along. You gotta horse around with your retrieve a little bit to figure out how the fish are behaving.
Not a big one, but I'm gonna slide over here. So, oh, he's gone. Ah. <laughs> there are no guarantees in fishing except for the opportunities to learn, and this trip was no different. It doesn't matter how skilled you are or how frequently you fish, it pays to occasionally get your butt kicked. Just make sure that you're taking something from that. While the Clarion is extremely rich in bug life, our goal this week was to find trophy browns on streamers. For the most part, we mixed it up with the new age patterns such as flatliners, sluggos, and a few local patterns. Got him. It's good, good fish too. Took that, uh, took that, it's a rainbow. It's a rainbow. Took that, uh, that sulfur. So, while we were sitting here resting, we had a fish rise. And it only rose the once. There's not a lot of bugs in the water. There's certainly been some sulfurs around, but um, I just had an infrig set up, and, and, uh, and, to and I said, should I probe it a little bit? And then we said, well, we'll put that, uh, put that nymph through it, and... Sure enough, took that little sulfur. Just head up. Nice. Good job. Just flip them right over here. Right over here. There we go. Now just... Oh, it came un came unbuttoned. Good. Good. Uh. Uh. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. Nice. 14, 15 inch fish. When we were nymphing or casting to rising fish, due to the abundance of mayflies in the drift, we matched the hatch with sulfurs. I may or may not have just seen a fish rise in there. Yep, 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 I did. I did see a fish rise. Just before taking the boat out, we found a good concentration of rising rainbows eating sulfur duns in a fairly large back eddy. It was a tough situation, but we couldn't pass it by. A lot of bugs in that back eddy. It really pays to practice casting with your, your weak hand. Um, I'm not nearly as good a caster with my left hand as I am with my right hand, but in this situation, I can't get a reach far enough upstream with my right hand to really get a good drift over those fish. With this short length of line and my left hand, I can really reach way upstream and kind of deposit that fly right on those rising fish and get a much longer drift. So every time you go out and practice or fish, it pays to kind of get yourself, to get yourself um, acquainted with your non-dominant hand. You have to know when you've been bested and the combination of near blanket hatch, a very tough lie, and difficulty in boat positioning due to the high water sent us to the pub, but not before I gained a new appreciation of what the Clarion had to offer. There's a couple in there that have shoulders on them. Aw, that damn thing's tail. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
We ended the day with a cold beverage, campfire, and stars. Does it get any better? For our final morning, after having the trout beat us up pretty badly the day before, we shifted our attention to the smallmouth water. As it turned out, these clarion fish all seemed to be a little more sophisticated than what we were prepared for. Before we hit the water, we chatted with John Stratif from the Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Visitor Bureau to learn more about the region. Well, there's a lot of things to do in Pennsylvania's Great Outdoors region. Outdoor adventure is king. Kayaking, canoeing, we have Pennsylvania's wild elk herd, 1,400 animals, scenic overlooks, miles and miles of trails for hiking, also for equestrian riding and ATV riding. So if you love the outdoors, we're the place you want to come. When you look at the Clarion River drainage system, it is federally designated by the U.S. government as wild and scenic for its natural beauty and outstanding recreational opportunities. The northern end, when we start in the Johnsonburg Ridgeway area, famous for big, big brown trout. As you come down the river, it becomes a mix of trout and smallmouth bass until you get to the Piney Reservoir on the bottom end of the river, which turns it to a warm water fishery. Today, we'll be on the Clarion River in the midsection, uh, very well known for smallmouth and big, big brown trout. So we've decided to switch things up here today. We're on the middle section of the Clarion River, Todd, and our target is trophy smallmouth bass, but we're told there's also big holdover browns in here. Water temperatures are good, and we're looking forward to it. That was a strip set. Did you see that? I did see that. Did you see that? I'm proud of you. It only took me five days. <laughs> I have a confession to make. I'm a lousy strip setter. All week, we've been hunting big trophy browns with big flies, and being the donkey I am, I would trout set them every time and pull the fly out of their mouth. It's just something I'm used to, and I don't fish a lot of streamers. So Todd had to sit me down and, and give me a little lecture. And during that, he talked about a demonstration that he's done. And I'm gonna demonstrate for you the merits of a strip set versus a sweep type set that we trout guys often do. So I've made my cast. I'm drawing the fly back to the boat. When I feel that bump or hit with the sweep set, watch what happens. Now, watch what happens with the strip set. I've made my cast, drawing the fly back to the boat. Feel that bump. There's the strip set. Pulled the fly out of Todd's hands. With the strip set, you're, you're pointing a rod at the fish and you're putting, you're putting all that power into the line. And what it does is it puts all that power directly into the hook point and drives that hook home so you can land the fish. So I had to perform a minor surgery on the boat too uh, today. And uh, I don't know if I signed on for that, but uh, I had to get the surgical kit out. Rob gave himself an ear piercing, stuck a murder minnow into his ear, but uh, the surgery went well, he's, he's recovering. So I'm keeping my glasses on for this piece because there's an important lesson here. I just made an errand cast over my right shoulder and a little on shoulder wind, and I drove, you can probably see it, a size two stainless steel hook right through my ear. Glasses, even in low light conditions when you're fly fishing, are, are, goes without saying, very important. But we can get complacent sometimes during low light conditions in the evening or early in the morning and not wear our glasses. It always pays to wear glasses. Earmuffs are an option. Glasses are a must. 
starting to hurt a little bit. There's a fish. Good fish. You want me to slide, out of, me to slide over there out of the car? No, no, I think we can I think we can manage him here. He came he came out of that out of that slack stuff, which we've been fishing all morning, you yep. know. Like it's just been it's just been weird. We haven't been able to You want me to slide, Rob? I like you. We haven't been able to uh, yeah, maybe you should. I can't I'm having a hard time moving him here. Um like it's just I know the conditions are the conditions are tough. And just keep his head down so he doesn't yeah. shake it. And the water is the water is cold. It's only forty nine degrees. Um, but we you know we just had certainly had higher expectations. That's a good fish. Certainly had higher expectations of. Uh, but I mean, there's not much you can do with forty nine degree water. Bass fishing's tough with fly gear. You can't. Yeah. It's tough to slow it down in a river too because because. Uh, um, you know, there's so much, so many rocks. There you go. Nice, thanks, pal. That's a nice. That's a nice. That's a good bass. That's. Oh, that's a good bass in anyone's book. Yeah, that's. You know. 17, 18 inches. That's a nice fish. You take a little drink there, pal. Thank you. Oh, you just barfed up a something. Crayfish, probably. There. I, you know, I think that's probably the coldest water that I've ever caught a bass in. Yeah. We just took a, a pretty nice bass out of the last little pocket we were in. It's very similar to this. And I'm fishing a game changer, a, a, a deer head game changer, which is a little different than the, uh, than the traditional game changer. But Todd told me to strip, 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 pause and just sort of let it hover. And I'm, I'm fishing a type six sink tip. And he said, strip, give it a couple of rips and let it pause. And that seemed to, to, to really, I mean, I don't know, we haven't hit a lot of fish today, but that seemed to be the kind of the trigger. Cause I watched him, I watched him come up under that. And then he just, he just said, I'm gonna eat you. And he did. For this week's episode, we used primarily eight weight rods, mainly due to the large flies that we were throwing. We used large arbor reels loaded with type three and type six sinking lines to drive those flies down through some of the deeper, darker water that we were fishing. When we traveled into the hills to fish the smaller streams, we dropped down to a five weight with a standard reel and a floating line, and then adjusted our leaders as we needed. For the dry fly fishing, we just use standard dry fly leaders and then a specialized indicator leader for any of the subsurface flies we were doing. That's pretty much it. Keeping it simple, just like we like to do. Although the Clarion didn't give up her secrets on this trip, it gave us a sample that made us want more. Western Pennsylvania is a beautiful part of the world and we look forward to returning. We've had a terrific time here in Western Pennsylvania had some tough conditions, rivers were up and off colored, but we found fish thanks to Todd DeLucci from Keystone Predator Outfitters. But we also need to thank John Stratiff from the Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Visitor Bureau and Vic and Marissa from the Clarion River Lodge. To see this destination and others, visit thenewflyfisher.com. And until next time, be safe and we'll see you on the water. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Visitors Bureau, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,